Yo, this Kingpin Cowboy, I'm off the porch with Dirty Glove, bastard. If you ain't rocking with Dirty Glove, you ain't rocking at all. But don't holler at him unless you got your moolah. Don't touch me, bitch, don't touch me. Back up off me, back up off me. Kingpin Cowboy, welcome to DGB, man. What's up, Dirty Glove, bastard? How's it going today, bro? Yeah, everything's beautiful, man. How are you? I'm doing well, man. All right, so let's uh, dive into it. You're Excuse originally me. from Albany, Georgia, right? Yeah, born and early on raised and then moved around a little, ended up in Atlanta. Yeah. In the like? 90s. Yeah. yeah. What was it like growing up in Albany? It was uh, different compared to Atlanta. That's why I was so excited to get to run as fast as I could here because it's a lot of profiling, a lot of uh, illegal stuff going on. Back then, wasn't no cameras prevalent, and uh, I went through a lot. A lot of arrests, wrongful arrests, yeah. you know, wrongful uh, things happening. Beat up by the police a few times. Hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, went to jail quite a few times, which I'm not romanticizing or, or trying to glamorize, but uh, that's another reason I'm rapping now, trying to get my story out to show the, uh, show the rappers and the artists coming up that are under me younger. That there's two sides of it it ain't all about the glitz and glamour it's a lot of downfalls of the game and if you choose to glamorize that you got to be ready for both sides yeah. after being locked up over like 30 times i learned my lessons and was like wow and it'll hit you hard and you ain't got necessarily be in the wrong to end up in that situation either you can just make one wrong move or end up in the wrong view of the wrong officer or whatnot next thing you know you might be getting beat up searched locked up some 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 stuff planted on you you never know so it was rough down there. Uh, I'd say it's more divided than it is in Atlanta, but back then things were more divided anyway yeah. than they are these days, you know. Yeah. And me being in the hood always, it threw a mark on my back mm -hmm. and had people uh, in law enforcement, you know, thinking it was all about drugs or this and that when it was actually, we just shoot hoops, me and the homies, you know, we might get a bag and roll a L, you know. Tampa Nugget or something, you know, <laughs> them days. But uh, yeah, it was just basically a lot of, a lot, a lot of targeting, you know, going yeah. on in the community, in the black community. And there's always been a lot of racial profiling. It's sad to see. And it actually turned me against, at some point, I was kind of like racist against my own skin color. It was weird. Like I got divided amongst all the shit going on with me the way I was being treated just for being with black people it made me feel like damn if they treat me like this I know they really hate these people that are my friends and family so it made me pissed off to the point where I became racist against my own people for a while now I see it through different eyes though mm -hmm. and I know you know you make mistakes as you walk in life and you got to answer and look in the mirror to everything you do yeah you know what I'm saying yeah all right so when at, at what age did you move to Atlanta uh, the first time I was like 17, okay. 16. Yeah. Well, the first time I came was with a homie of mine. I wasn't but 13. And it's a long story, but we ended up up here for a minute. You know, I kind of ran away, was hanging with prostitutes, stuff like that. I ended up going back home because, you know, I was young. I didn't know how to survive like that. I made it happen a little. Then I'd be like, oh, I got to throw in the towel. I got to go back home. You know what I'm saying? This is too much. Like, I'm too deep right now. And then I ended up back home, go to school for a minute, quit again. You know, the same old cycle I was going through. My dad was, uh, he was, uh, he was a good man. He tried hard, did his best, but he was an alcoholic, gambler, chasing hoes and dope, you know, and running dope, my uncles and them. So I kind of grew up around a lot of weird shit, you know what I'm saying? Street shit, not weird shit, street shit. Yeah. You know, criminal activity. And, uh, I saw my uncle and them making so much money, bro. It just infatuated me with the whole game to the point to where I was like, damn, I want to be like my uncle. You know what I'm saying? And then the GBI raided him, took his house, his land, and they auctioned it off. My granddad was standing there with his hat in his hand and bid on it and got it back. Hmm. Then when he died, he left it to my dad. My dad sold it and he moved to Atlanta too because I was already up here with a, with, a bit, with a girl from Capital Homes I was going with. You know, uh, a lot of people probably don't know about Capital Homes, but long story short, he blew all the money gambling on the Georgia lottery, literally, in alcohol. Oh, wow. From, from that whole, and it kind of hurt me bad because I saw my uncle go through so much to get the money to buy that. 
and then lose it to the GBI seizure. And then my granddad come up there at auction and bid and get it back and then die and leave it to him and him to blow it all on gambling. So I had some anger toward my dad, but we were tight always, you know. Yeah. And uh, when I moved up here, let's see, first I went to Noonan, Georgia. I don't know if y'all know where that is, but I got a bunch of cell cases on crack shit like that down there. And uh, when I got out from that, it was just on from then. It was just no turning back. I was just like back to back, locked up, street life, locked up, locked up, street life. It was just a whirlwind. And, and before you know it, time passes, man. Yeah. Like I was supposed to be rapping years ago. Yeah. The same, same thing I'm trying to do now. But you know, my story is longer. It's kind of painful, but it's longer and stronger, and my consistency is tighter now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the foundation is more solid, but it's in a rough way, you know? Yeah. But the message is stronger yeah. to teach people, you know, the rights and wrongs and what to or not to do. Yeah. So when did you first start taking an interest in making music? Uh, when I was in prison. Yeah. How old yeah. Was that? I was, uh, Mm, about 21, 22, okay. 20, 21, I wrote my first rap. Well, actually, I wrote my first rap to my crush in high school. Hmm. But I just recited somebody else's song. It was N.W.A. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I just wrote that song. The hook and all, it was... Uh, uh, gangster, gangster, what were they yelling? <laughs> yeah, I wrote that whole song, everything, and gave it to her in class. And next thing you know, we were going, to, she was on the drill team. And uh, we went together, but I wrote my first rap in jail on the way to prison. And uh, I was like 21. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And we used to rap on the yard, you know, we'll gamble. They'll be like, hey, somebody just came in from this camp, this camp. Uh, They'll knock on the window and be like, come out on the yard, Dirty Red, because that was my nickname in the street, Dirty Red. Bank gave me the name Cowboy. Okay. Bank Road Fresh. And I, uh, in memory of him, I let that stick. Yeah. Plus, you know, him being in the business and to me, such a big artist, and to be around him, I was so thankful to get that experience. Yeah. And he was like a little legend to me because I was on the run for eight years and I saw him in my hood, <laughs> Allen Temple from afar. And I'm like, damn, he around my people and them up there. So, you know, one day I ought to go through there and my old lady was like, nah, you on the run, you don't need to go up there, it's too hot, you know what I'm saying? So long story short, man, uh, we started rapping on the yard and uh, net bags of commissary would be out there and they'd be like, boom, they'd have judges. It was like some shit in the fucking open mic or something, but it was in prison. And uh, I'd win, win, win. I ain't really never had nobody beat me. And then this one kid came, this little Dominican kid, he rapped like Twister. And we in the country, you know, we in South Georgia in a fucking Uncle Tom ass camp, yeah, fucking everybody. Nah, so when everybody heard it, you know, he won that day and I was <laughs> mad. I was like, bro, I can't fucking rap like this. I'm not even gonna rap now. It was funny. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, so when you got out of prison, did you focus on music right away? Or? Nah, I got out of prison and moved in with one of my sisters. I got two sisters and uh, I remember uh, they had an open mic on the radio. I was in the back seat and she was like, you should go, you're really good. And I was like, man, I ain't studying that shit. I gotta get some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was on some dumb shit back then and I just didn't ever do it. Yeah. And I had like seven, 800 songs wrote, hooks and all. Oh wow, from and prison? I, yeah, from prison. Yeah. I do a song a day. <laughs> I had the same seat at the same table. And every day I'd go to that table and write. And everybody in my dormitory knew. There was like, I think, 80 people in our dorm. They knew, they, that's my spot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'd be ready to write about my spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, no chairs, no dice, or I mean, no checkers, cards, nothing. I want my spot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I had to write a couple of times, but once I got it, I got it because it was peaceful. I could see out the window. I could write. I'd go in the shower, smoke me a joint. Bless the man who used to do that for me, get me that. But uh, I used to smoke me a J, get my coffee. Roll me a few cigarettes and go sit and smoke and write. So yeah, I wrote a lot in prison, man. It was like, uh, I think it's a breeding ground for pain and to see the other side, you know, of what you did wrong too. Not just, you know, cause it ain't always what they did to you. A lot of times what you do to you mm -hmm. is what makes it uh, your music and your life. But a lot of people try to put the blame on him and him and him. I blame myself for anything I did. Cause if I didn't get up and walk out the door that morning, it wouldn't have happened. Even if they were in the wrong, yeah, I still had to be there, you know. Yeah. Who were some of your favorite rappers uh, when you were growing up? Uh, Fiend. Yeah. Master P. Okay. Uh, so No Limit. Yeah, No Limit. Uh, 
Let me keep it real here. Let me tell you, uh, Wu Tang. Uh, they had been out for a while when I was growing up, but I liked Wu Tang a lot. I like, well, let me say the ones I mainly liked off Wu Tang was Raekwon, Ghostface, and uh, the RZA's beats, and I was insane. And I had never heard no shit like that. And I liked Mob Deep, yeah. first album. I didn't too much like Hell on Earth. Uh, South Circle, Ball and G, uh, Tila, uh, Triple Six Mafia, Three Six Mafia now, but it was Triple Six. I remember my, my homie used to come from Memphis with the gray TDK cassette tapes oh, yeah. with Triple Six demo on it yeah. before they ever dropped all that shit. And the hook would be like five fucking minutes long, bro. <laughs> but it was hard as fuck. We ain't never heard no twisted yeah. up shit. Like, it was dark, you know what I'm saying? And we liked it, so yeah. That was some of the rabbits. All the Southern, you know, Outkast, of course. Shout out to uh, Goody Mob and Outkast, because yeah. That was some conscious shit I had never heard. So, you know, all that era, man, was a lot of stuff that can't be overturned no more. Like, yeah. there's they some artists coming along that can be on the same level, but to me, they'll never be topped again. You know what I'm saying? Because they were the first to do it, they pioneered it. Yeah. And to me, like, Master P pioneered trap rap to me, but that's another subject, I don't wanna get on that. Mm -hmm. Him and his whole No Limit artist yeah. roster. Mm -hmm. And that's why I reached out to work with uh, Fiend first, yeah. When I came home and uh, I got serious about the music mm -hmm. around the time Bank died, I was like, oh shit, these folks are dying out here around yeah. me about the music. I got to be more serious, so yeah. Okay, so when did you first start releasing music? I started releasing music in 2016 okay. when uh, Bank Road Fresh died and I had been blessed to be around him and uh, Street Money Left Hand was uh, somebody was on the little roster of Street Money with Bank and uh, he gave me that name. He had started taking to me a little bit, you know, but we didn't get a long time to get to know each other. My, uh, what do you call it when you don't like to be around a lot of people? What's that word? You want to be solo a lot. Yeah. That among me, I was out on bond at the time. When I came home, I was on the run eight years and I started releasing music right after Bank died. But uh, I came home in August of 2015. And Bank got killed, you know, just about six months later. But I was on, out on bond for 11 felonies mm. in Cobb County because they raided my house and came and got me at 5.30 in the morning. They had flashbang grenades. Uh, they came about 63, 64 officers was on the roster that morning oh, to get me. Mm. The ski mask and infrared. My 10-year-old daughter was there. They threw flashbangs through a window. And an a, 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 a addict set me up that I was trying to help actually get off drugs. Mm. And she set me up and played me. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I, anyway, back to the story, you was asking me the music. <laughs> this is why we're here. Uh, yeah, that shit, shit fucks with me when I start talking about it. Anyway, uh, because all that running together and then me getting out of all that and, and, and trying to do music at the same time, fighting them felonies, it was fucking with me. So I didn't release music officially until Bank died. And I was like, you know what? I don't need to run from this. I got a real story and I've been around some, and, and plus people lost their lives behind this. Somebody needs to step up and be serious. So when he died, I started pressing up Street Money shirts with my name on the back, Street Money on the front, big, helping promote. And I dropped, I uh, hit Fiend up on the ground like, hey bro, I wanna do a feature with you. This is my story in small, short, you know, character. Mm -hmm. And he was like, all right, cool, A and B. So I A and B'd and, and I went to the studio, did my, got the beat from the guy, uh, his name Drum Major on Instagram, uh, OG Drum, OG Drum Major, DJ Drum Major. Anyway, I got the beat and I didn't even know how to rap in the booth. Yeah. So it took me like an hour to do the first song, <laughs> first verse. Yeah. And his homeboy is named uh, Making Money, Angel Hood, I don't know if you know who that is. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 wish the great work with them. They did his art. Anyway, so they sitting there like, nah, just tell me something about your life. I said, all right, we'll go say that and say that. And I was like, well, I can rap about this. They was like, nah, let's do current. So we did that and I hit Fiend. Boom, did it. Put it on World Star. Tell him, let's shoot the video. Pay for that. And this is all out of pocket. You know, I ain't never had nobody behind me. I ain't got no money. My mom and dad, you know, always check the check. But uh, I made it happen anyway through the fire. Yeah because of my passion. And to have Fiend come down to shoot the video, and I was sick the day we were shooting the video. So he pulls up and he was like, you ready? I was like, man, I don't even wanna do this shit. Fuck it, let's go to the hood. So we go to Dixie Hill, West Atlanta, to one of my hoods, and we pull up and everybody just starts pouring in out the hood. Like, oh, white boy out here finna shoot the video, cowboy, you know what I'm saying? Boom, I hand them shirts. We file, shoot the video. I put it on World Star front page. That cost me a little check. 
boom, 24 hours out, ran Juicy J, uh, whoever else was on there that day, uh, I beat them. You know what I'm saying? I got 1.4 million views in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And that was my first ever song ever. That was and the first song you released? Yeah, ever. What was the name of that one? Junkies on the Cam, uh, featuring Fiend, yeah. produced by uh, OG Drum Major, DJ Drum Major, whatever. I can't, his yeah. tag's on the Drum Major. Yeah. What type of uh, feedback did you get for that song? You I got, I got good, million, so. yeah, yeah, I got good feedback. I think a lot of it was uh, the strategy and the title of the song and other things in the area that I used and the thumbnail that make people click, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But overall, the song's hot, it's all right. I don't like the song personally. After really? I liked it till Fiend blew me out on my own verse, but I got homies saying they like my verse. So, you know, it's an opinion thing with music yeah. and art. So, but I think I got so much deeper stuff and skill in me mm -hmm. that it's still getting revealed from myself. You know, I'm still yeah. revealing it as I go. Because yeah. I'm still like, you know, I hadn't been in the booth over 40, 45 times in my life. Hmm. So it's still starting to come to the surface. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard, so I'm doing a lot of pain music now. Yeah. yeah. I got you. And you also worked with uh, Beats by the Pound producer, Moby Dick. Yeah. What was that experience like? Man, Moby Dick, oh my God. Man, he is a true musician and a true good person, man. He is deep. I tell you, he told me my cadence was off and I was sounding corny and I was like thinking to myself, I got 1.4 me, the ego, you know, as an artist, because everybody's got their own ego. So I was like, what's he telling me? Woo -de -woo. And he was like, look, if you're going to bring your ego in here, man, then I just give you your money back, dog. I want you to go outside, leave your ego and come back and let's work, because I think you got it, and I know you got it, but you got to listen to me. Yeah. Have you ever sold 100 million records? And I was like, fuck nah. Matter of fact, you right, bro, and I'm humble, so I'm on the way out the door, I'll be right back. I went out, smoked me a cigarette, came back in, we meditated together <laughs> under a pyramid, and uh, it was deep. And I learned a whole lot from that guy, man. My hat's off to that man forever. And we actually spend a lot of time together. Every time he's in town, we spend time yeah. together. You yeah. know, he's like family. Me and him are family. Yeah, yeah his wife, his kids, they, they real great people, man. Uh, it was real nice working with him. Yeah. Was that your first time ever meditating? Uh, nah, man, I had to meditate a lot in prison. Okay. Because, okay. you know, I was in Jackson State. They had me locked down 20, 24 hours a day in, in uh, H House. I was right next to death row. I used to reach out and shake hands with people going to die soon. And they'd hand me cigarettes and all because they had, a lot had happened. I had gotten some trouble with some shanks and some people getting hurt real bad. And uh, they tried to put me in all that. So I ended up locked down next to death row for a while until they found out if I was going on trial for murder or not. Yeah. The one was locked up. Yeah, it was fucked up. So I had to do a lot of meditating. It wasn't my first time yeah, meditating. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> gotcha. All right, and you also worked with uh, Little Donald on a song called Shame. What was that like working with him? Man, that was amazing too. That guy's got skills that I, I've, uh, he's different for sure. Yeah. He don't write really. He'll sit there and think and get in the booth and harmonize. And I ain't never seen nobody work like that because I hadn't been in the booth much. Yeah. So seeing him work and put together this shit, I was like, damn, little homie got it. But I knew he had it. When I reached out to him, I saw him on Instagram. I've never heard Juice and none of that because I'm still listening to what I like yeah. and what I know. So when I heard it, I was like, let me reach out to Lil Donald. I reached out to him. He hit me back. Let's meet. Bring some music with you. You got some music? I was like, yeah, because I don't work with just anybody. I want to hear your music. So we met at the cookout on Moreland Ave, man, and I played, brought my CD with some of my music half-assed finished besides Junkies on the Camera, 80 Zips, and sat in Detroit. He was like, damn, bro. We fucking hard, bro. I like that. So uh, we decided, you know, he decided he'd work with me. Yeah. We met that night at the studio or the following night, laid down Shame, then worked the next night and laid down another song that I hadn't released named Freedom. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, it's a little deeper. Uh, but yeah, and then he took me on the road with him to Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Me, my wife, my poodle took us on the road, you know, all expense paid, like, he just showed me love, and I got to perform at a theater, it was my first performance, but I actually felt great performing, I wasn't nervous, I was like in my groove, I loved it, and it was a great experience, man, I really, my hat's off to that guy, I've been blessed to meet some good people, I think I've reached out to some good people, my energy ain't lying to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really taken off since then with uh, his Yeah, he has. Right after we got back from Wisconsin, he took off, man. He's doing really well. Yeah. I'm proud of him, too, man. He came a long way. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And uh, most recently, you released a music video for 80 Zips. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about that song and video? Uh, I, I was up at Street Execs at the bank that trying to work with the same engineer he liked to work with and the same place he worked to get the vibe. Yeah. So I was up there working with King CEO or CEO, whatever yeah. they call him on the beat, and uh, turned the beat up CEO or some shit is his name now. But uh, we were working and he had a beat he was playing. I was like freestyling. He was like, oh, that's hard. Punch that. And I was like, let me get that beat. And, you know, that's how 80 Zips came about. And then I let it sit for a long time, man, and yeah. decided last summer, let me put this video out to keep something coming, you know? Because yeah. uh, I'm fixing to drop uh, four albums in the next four months. Oh, so really? I'm trying to, you know, get prepared for that. Gotcha. So what's the first one that you plan on dropping? Uh, live Real, Die Real. Okay. And it's kind of like, uh, the reason I say that, because I lost a few homies. Uh, Street Money Left Hand used to be with Bank. He got murdered last August, uh, right by Island Temple, man. And uh, he used to be on me all the time, bro. He called me so much. Come on, bro, we gotta hit the yo, bro. You got it, bro. Let's just go do this. Let's finish what we started, bro. And I fucked off so much thinking tomorrow's gonna be here. Yeah. Tomorrow's gonna be here. And you know what? I got that phone call at 1.30 in the morning, bro. And uh, they say he'd been shot in the head. I went to Grady and, uh, uh, it, it went down like that, and after that, I decided, you know what, fuck that, I'm fixing to release these albums, live real, die real, and I said that in 80 Zips, that was one of my bars, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and, and it stuck, you know what I'm saying, what I was saying, because so many people that live real in my hood, when they died, it was still real, I mean, they, they name wasn't in vain, yeah. you know what I'm saying, they, they taught lessons to us, and, and, and left inspiration for us, so it ain't in vain, you know, yeah. so that's live real, die real, another album name is, uh, uh, dang, I just, oh, addicted to the pain. Cause it's like we all addicted to pain in some way or the other. Cause like me being locked up 30 times, stupid shit. We yeah. do it to ourselves. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Now these albums you already have completed or are you still working? Yeah, I got them, uh, I've got enough to fill up probably six albums, seven, yeah. eight, but I'm still bringing up new songs every time I hit the studio. It's like, the, that's the nightmare of an artist, right? You yeah. know, you always got unfinished stuff. So yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'm getting stuff mixed right now. I'm finalizing and uh, doing some visuals and, you know, things like that yeah. and deciding what songs have a listening party and stuff. Yeah. You plan on dropping a documentary with the, one of these albums too? Yeah, I want to, uh, actually we've already started working on the documentary. Okay. And I got uh, also uh, working with uh, Mr. Servone and some more people. Yeah, we're we working, but I got to do a lot of traveling. Yeah. And me working on these albums, I want to knock that out and get the music in place. Mm -hmm. And then finish the documentary as I go. Because I got to travel to Florida and Alabama, yeah. places I lived and did my thing, you know. Gotcha. Get people on camera besides just me to yeah. uh, tell that side, you know. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, any other artists or producers you can reveal that you've been working with? Yeah, I've uh, worked with uh, Mr. Servone, who is also a platinum No Limit artist. Uh, uh, Project Pat, I got a track with Project Pat that I've uh, been sitting on and me and him are supposed to get together soon and shoot the video. Okay. He was like, yeah, that's a go when I sent it back to him when I finished it. He was like, yeah, that's a big go, let's do a video. And uh, I'm working with him, let's see. I got another little Donald song I mentioned, Freedom. Uh, who else? Uh, left Hand, Street Money Left Hand. Yeah. The one that got killed, my homie, that brought me into this shit, the rap shit. We got some songs together and some footage, visuals together that I hadn't released. And, uh, hmm. What about producers? Uh, Moby Dick. Uh, hoping to get to work with KLC. We're putting that together. Oh, and I got a hook in a uh, song I'm working with. I'm waiting on C Murder to call Mr. Servo on back. I got a hook from C Murder, too. Oh, wow. And he's gonna call, I'm waiting on, before I finish, I mean, I got the song finished, yeah. before I can release it, though, I want him to stamp it. Yeah. He's gonna call home, but he's already heard about me and approved it. Oh, okay. But I, like I told my homie, I wanna get his boy stamping that, cause I like to have that backup, you yeah. know? Cause you know how so many people do shit, mm -hmm. take shit from other artists, or yeah. take words they've already used and insert them in a the song without permission, yeah. and then, then try to reach back if it blows and show love. That ain't how I get down, I show respect from the gate. Yeah. yeah. So this is something he had uh, previously recorded? Uh, yeah, because he's in prison. He had previously recorded. Him and Servon was going to drop it. 
The okay. servo was like, bro, you, you, you a real one, bro. I want you to do this. This is special. You special. You family to me. I want you to do it. You deserve it. Yeah. And since you've been locked up so much and he's been locked up so long, it only makes sense. And I was like, damn, I didn't even think of that. But thank you. Because a lot of guys wouldn't, you know, pass the light bulb to you like that and let yeah. you shine none. Mm -hmm. They want it all for themselves and they don't show, show love in return, you know. And, and that's one thing I always did. And I think it affected me in a in a good way, it hurt me some, mm -hmm. but it also affected me to the point where sometimes you'd be blinded by your givenness, you know, your giving, and sometimes you gotta be smarter than that. But overall, I don't regret, you know, giving none. I give back a lot yeah. over my years, you know. Yeah. So uh, do you have a personal favorite song that, that we should be looking out for? Uh, I got this new song called Addicted to Pain. Okay. And I ain't never really worked with auto tune. I just laid it last night, and uh, it's gonna be real hard. And the visuals gonna be so crazy. All my visuals are about to be so crazy. Yeah, they're so creative. I create. I try to direct my own stuff. Oh yeah. And I'm. A, I create all my own songs. I write for myself. Hooks. I pick my own beats. Yeah. And uh. I've always been, and everybody that works with me always told me, man, you pick some good ass beat. You got a good ear for it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that everybody likes everything I put out, but I know some things will touch certain people in better ways than others because yeah. of their experiences in life. <laughs> Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, that, the addicted to pain, uh, I got one, uh, Fallen Soldiers. Yeah. It, it touched me so much I was crying when I was trying to record it, and I had to take a pause from the booth and leave and come back. Yeah. But that's personal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That might not touch the next man like it, mm -hmm. but I like all my songs, though. Yeah. All right, so uh, how would you describe your sound for people who haven't heard any of your music yet? Uh, reality rap. Yeah. Reality rap. That's what I always say in my head. Uh, I got a deep voice, mm -hmm. and I'm country sounding, you know, so it can have that country drag to it at times, but I can, I can speed it up and down. But I guess my sound would be... I don't want to call it gangster rap, uh, cause that ain't what it is. Uh, just reality rap. Reality rap. Yeah. yeah, I try anything I rap on, is something I been through. I lived yeah. it. I ain't gonna rap it, and that's one thing I, I suggest a lot of artists do. But everybody teach his own. I don't really know the next man and can't speak on him. But I, I, I really believe in an artist being true to what he been through and doing was really the basis on kind of like hip hop to me and rap to start with. All right, so. What else you got? What else should we be on the look for? Just these albums? Yeah, the albums, documentary, uh, visuals. Uh, you know, I just I want everybody to check in for me, man, because I'm, I'm, I'm from right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Albany, but I've been right here so many years since I was young. I'm from here, bro. And I, I was here before the rap shit blew up in Atlanta. And, and I went from homelessness, sleeping literally on the West End behind the mall. They had black benches, bro. And I'd go to Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and Miss Betty Crumbly, her son just got murdered. Me and him were real good friends, man. And uh, he was at the Shepherd Center. He got paralyzed and he died from complications. Mm -hmm. But when I first got out of prison on leg monitor, I was I was wild. So I cut my leg monitor off, went on the run. I, I left Allen Temple in Adamsville and went over to Pittsburgh because I knew the Fugitive Squad would be looking for me. Yeah. They let me sleep in their basement. They don't know me like that, though. You know what I'm saying? But me and him met and got cool, and he was like, man, you a good dude, bro. You don't deserve all this shit you going through, man. You just made some bad decisions. I'm going to talk to my mama. They let me sleep some. Sometimes she'll trip because yeah. I was still bad. You know what I'm saying? Running around with pistols on me, doing crazy shit. And, and I'd sleep in Pittman Park. Then I'd walk to the West End and, and try to get me some money. I wouldn't ask for a dollar. Never have I walked up to nobody. Asked, Can't nobody come on my comments or nothing and say, Cowboy asked for one dollar. Even when I was homeless, I slept in them abandoned cars, buildings, and I got this shit back on my own, you know what I'm saying, on my shoulders. And I went from homeless, prison, to damn near a kingpin, yeah. and they raided me and took me back down to zero. I went back blank in 2015, reset, and God blessed me for a reason to be here. So I hope everybody checked me just on the strength though. I came from the same spot where everybody trying to make it at. Yeah. And I came off my own back. I ain't burnt my face with nobody, and I ain't snitched on nobody. And I kept it real to the code, to the core for all the ones that fell before me and, and that's gonna fall after me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that alone on the strength she let people maybe be interested in the real, you yeah. know what I'm saying? If they like to hear a real artist, because I know if I ever make it to where some of these people at, I'm gonna show them how, what real change in the community is and yeah. how to give back and bring your homies and people out and give back, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Not just give back to these jewelers and these wraiths. I still be in my old school caddy probably, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
you know, if it happens, so. Anything else you want to add? Uh, man, long live left hand, long live bank. Shout out to everybody out here, man, and I hope everybody, you know. I done whip 80 zips, fucked around, got 80 bricks. Bust it down to all nicks, bust it down to all zips. Bust it down to all splits. Yo, bitch on my balls and dick, trying to kick shit with a pimp. I don't do karate.